Hello, this is Dennis with A1 Telephone Service and Repair, A1 Electronics. You can reach us on the web at www.a1-telephone.com and you can also reach us at 618-235-6959. Today I want to show you a really cool Italian business telephone and this is HG's telephone from Delaware and if you watch my videos you know that HG always sends in these really unique telephones. He travels a lot and he get, picks these telephones up from overseas and uh, so he finds them and then we convert them for him and uh, this is a really cool Italian telephone and so basically what we're going to do here is this is the initial checkout but we're going to have to do a lot of conversion to this telephone and I have the body loose and I have the cover to the uh, connection block loose so basically we're going to kind of go through the telephone and talk about what we're going to do to it because we have to convert this telephone and even though this telephone has a uh, keypad that would look like it's touch tone, it actually dials out in rotary. And I'm going to show you that right now. If I plug this uh, cord in, we kind of have the telephone hooked up in a way. And we have dial tone now. It's off hook because I have it directly connected. And I'm going to dial. And I, our dial is loose here our keypad because I, I'm going to show it to you a little later in the video. But I want to press a 1 we'll just walk through the keypad here and you can tell it's dialing out in pulse mode because you can see this light and it lights up for a while and that's your pulse signals going by touch tone would dial that number much quicker and see on star we don't have anything and then on pound we don't have anything and then I'm going to dial a zero and see how long it took to dial a zero and I'm going to dial a two we're just going to end in a two we have uh, buttons that are a function buttons so if you press that button and lift that up press that button lift it up these are momentary switches so they actually uh, I'm going to disconnect the phone they actually would signal um, some type of a, a control panel and basically uh, change functions in the phone or go to a different line or something like that but they don't actually lock down so since they don't stay down it would basically be what's called a momentary switch and these were probably for different functions and then you would press the red button to bring that button up now these buttons have lights in them it looks like and so you know HG likes indicator lights if you've watched any of our videos about his telephones and so basically we're going to try to do some light situations for him uh, it's going to be in an LED type situation so we'll use something like that into the circuitry that we build for this telephone because we're going to have to take this keypad here and we're going to have to turn it into touch tone so there's going to be a little bit of a conversion that we have to work out for that and then we have to give him a light uh, so that you know it shows that he's getting dial tone and we also are thinking about using maybe one of these buttons here to actually turn off like the bell because we're going to have to install a bell in this telephone it doesn't have one so I want to give you a look real quick at the 25 pair cable and this uh, big cable we've decided to leave on the telephone because that came with the telephone and we want to keep it original. It's a very cool telephone and there's your switch box and you see where somebody has come in and cut out a bunch of wiring that would probably go to a different uh, connection to a different phone and that's all been cut out. When we get done with this we're going to have a modular port installed in this uh, connection block and HG can simply walk up to it and plug any line cord, any length, any color he chooses into it and this will be our connection block. That will run back to the telephone and we'll get our dial tone and our line out through our uh, modular port that plugs into this. Now this telephone is really pretty unique and it's stylish and HG 
has uh, some information on this telephone where it won a style award of some type and there's actually uh, some information he's going to send me. It's probably in a museum or something and I'm going to try to uh, list that on the video and give that information where uh, it talks about the telephone and the design of it. So I have the cover loose and I want to give you a better look at the cover here. And it's a very cool telephone. So that gives you a look at the cover and we'll set that to the side here because I want to show you the actual telephone. And we have some connections here I can I can take them away. And then we have our 25 pair cable that comes into the telephone and we have all of our connection block here and then we have a lot of different workings on the inside and these are leaf contacts is what they are so when you do different functions the leaf contacts will move and actually the hook switch is back here so that comes down and has linkage that goes to these leaf contacts in the center and then on our momentary switches here we actually have an extra two that they've got installed here that can go where the C is if you notice it's one C three four five six so it's probably some type of a six line phone and I'm not sure what the C means but there's a two if you wanted to put the two up there and then put the C down there so it, it has a meaning but I'm not sure for what reason or what the purpose is and we may know more about it when we uh, receive some information to the web page. Now I have the keypad loose and that just shows you the design of this keypad but it actually dials out in pulse mode. So we'll have to change that and wire in a board that uh, is capable of giving us touch tone. And so even though there's a lot of work to this telephone. It's going to be uh, pretty cool to be able to use it and use it in the touch tone mode. And the keypad doesn't want to sit in there properly. I would have to, you know, bolt it in anyway. So we're doing our, final, our uh, checks on this telephone. It's initial checkout. So uh, there's no sense in putting any of it back together again because we're going to get a start on this telephone and start uh, converting it. Also, want to talk about there is no receiver capsule on the inside of this telephone it's missing that's not a big issue because we're not sure exactly what we want to do yet and so we may upgrade the receiver and the microphone the transmitter so we're not sure what we're going to do yet and when we do figure it out we'll just uh, install a receiver capsule and we're going to get some more video of this telephone as we move along in the conversion and repair of this very cool Italian business telephone. So we'll be right back. Okay, we're back now and I'm going to show you a little bit about what's going on here. Uh, we have a uh, couple of parts here that we no longer need because they belong to the original PC board uh, and the dial board your keypad and then the main PC board that was in this unit which we can't use because it dialed out in pulse and so we have our new board installed in our keypad and so that's been secured into the mount we also had to shorten your brackets for the mount for the keypad because it didn't uh, come out exactly the same as it did with the older board and so now that had to be trimmed back and uh, everything refitted 
So there's a lot to redesigning the telephone. And so now we're going to go ahead and do a check. If you watch the analyzer, I'm going to go ahead and uh, it's activated. And I want to go ahead and dial our numbers out. If you watch the analyzer, you'll watch the numbers go by. And now we're dialing out in tone. And I want to end in a 2. So we know that that is working. I can go ahead and unplug it. Now, for the redesign here, what we're going to do is since uh, there's lights in these buttons here, what we are going to do is probably on the right side, we're going to have a flashing plasma bulb basically uh, indicating that you have a ring coming in and we're also going to install a bell. Uh, there's some issues that we had to work out inside the telephone so our bell would uh, fit in. And on this button here, which also has a light in it, uh, we can't use these two lights. Uh, they're the wrong type of lights. And uh, this is going to be a super bright blue LED that will be shining as a uh, telephone um, online basically. In other words, uh, it'll be an in-use button and it'll be in blue and it'll be a super bright LED. So we'll install that in here and then the plasma bulb will go here for the ring cycle. So we'll also have a bell. We need to also go ahead and I want to show you this transmitter. If you remember earlier in the video this handset didn't have a receiver inside, so that capsule has to be replaced. And we're also going to replace this T1. The T1 is too noisy to use. It has too much static. So we're going to build an electric mic, a transmitter. So we're in the process of building that now. And then we need to start wiring in our LED, our light bulb, and uh, the bell and how we're going to configure everything in our hook switch. So there's quite a bit to uh, the conversion here. Get a little more video as we move forward in the repair and redesign of this telephone. So we'll be right back. Okay, we're back now. And so basically what we've been working on is the lights. And we're going to have a um, in-use light right here. And then this switch I basically picked that for turning the bell on and off and we'll have a ring cycle indicator right here. And so we're going to go ahead and test those lights. A lot of uh, redesign has been going on and I had to change a lot of the situation in this uh, switch bar. So basically to show you that the switch works that's going to uh, work the bell, turn it off and on, is I have it hooked up right now. And so when you pick up the receiver, what will happen, and I'm just using the switch uh, to show you that the switch works, that's what you'll see. You'll get an indicator light that the telephone is in use. And now we can turn that off because I want to do uh, the other function which will be a ring cycle and I want to set that up here real quick and I want to get my leads positioned and we'll do a ring cycle test and then you'll be able to turn the bell off and on right here. HG likes to have a switch for that so we'll go ahead and uh, hit the analyzer and, and uh, start a ring cycle. I'll let that go a few times. So that'll be our visual indicator. Let that go one more time. And we'll go ahead and shut the ring cycle down. Now, there was quite a bit of redesign of this uh, 
mechanism and then we had to install a switch and so it'll be you push down once it turns it off push it down again it turns it on so everything's being redesigned basically and uh, you have to do that when you're uh, trying to redesign the telephone for a home use situation and we also took the button off of number two that had a C on it I wanted it to look more uniformed one two three four five six we're gonna take a short break and we'll be right back okay we're back now and I kinda wanna show you a little bit about what's going on with the handset now earlier in the video we showed that this telephone came in and it did not have a receiver capsule so we have replaced a receiver capsule to the handset now and what we want to do is I probably also talked about uh, I design a uh, electronic transmitter and the reason why I've designed electronic transmitter is because when uh, the T1s and these telephones start getting some age on them or the ones the uh, transmitters that have the carbon granules in them they get real noisy and so uh, they cause a lot of static sensation and they cause a lot of problems and instead of trying to replace the old carbon granule transmitters uh, we just build a electronic transmitter and this is it right here and we're going to be installing this so it's basically a circuit that we build a microphone and it takes place of that transmitter the quality of the audio from this transmitter that I build is far superior to anything that you're going to get in a carbon uh, transmitter so basically I want to show you here exactly what I'm talking about uh, I'm going to go ahead and plug the unit in I'm going to give you some dial tone I want to shake it a little. You can hear that transmitter, the noise coming out of it. Hear how staticky that is? really sounds uh, pretty bad so what we're going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and take that transmitter out there's no need for this any longer uh, we don't mess around with them uh, that's why I started designing and building these electronic transmitters um, I just don't even try to replace these uh, carbon granule type transmitters any longer there's no need for them and the quality is so much better that comes out of uh, the electronic microphone that we build here so basically what I want to do is I want to start removing some of the brackets that are inside this telephone and we'll go ahead and do that And then we have our connections here to this microphone right here. So all we have to do is just go ahead and put our uh, screws that are hold downs back in and everything will be uh, just fine. So I'm going to take a short break from the video and I'm going to go ahead and install the transmitter and I'll be right back. Okay, now what we can do is we can go ahead and uh, put the transmitter all the way into the handset uh, we have our circuit wrapped up a little bit so it's protected and it doesn't touch anything um, that would short it out
And basically it's as simple as that once you uh, make your connections. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and get rid of our hardware here. We don't need that any longer. Um, there will never be a, a granule transmitter in this telephone again. So give you some dial tone. And I want to move it around a little bit because these transmitters are not prone to any type of noise other than you might hear me tapping on it. And if you watch this red light on the analyzer, I'm pretty far away from this telephone, the handset here, and you can see the mic is at about 100% transmit right there and I'm a good foot and a half away from it. And I'm going to go ahead and speak into it. Transmit, one, two, three, four, five, six. You see how bright that light is getting? The quality behind this transmitter that we build is, is just far superior to anything that you're going to get in a carbon microphone. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hello, hello. So now what we can do is we can do a little test. I can push my uh, switch box switch and that will give us a line out. And as you can see that telephone is probably the handset. It's got to be over two foot away from me and it's still picking uh, my transmit up. So the quality is uh, pretty outstanding with them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a tone dialer and I'm going to go ahead and dial uh, a time and temp number and we know that this has to be uh, very sensitive if it's going to pick up a tone dialer then uh, that would be the test. Now I don't know if they have the time and temp number repaired yet but they're having issues with their uh, equipment and you'll hear the recording and what will happen is uh, they'll have a real loud hum in there and that has nothing to do with what we're doing here. It's basically their equipment and they whether they've got it repaired yet I don't know but you might hear some loud hums in their recording. So we'll go ahead and push the switch box now. dial out and pulse and we couldn't use that. So that was uh, 
you know, a, a lot went on with this keypad because we had to insert another keypad uh, behind our buttons and uh, wire in a board and then uh, our PC board for our tone generator situation. We also installed, like we showed earlier, a electronic transmitter and then another receiver. We had to wire everything up the way we wanted it wired and reconfigure a lot of things. So uh, a lot of work went into this telephone, but it was well worth it. It's an Italian uh, type business telephone and it's just a really cool telephone. I'm sure HG is going to really like this telephone a lot and get a lot of use out of it. So anyway, uh, we want to do our final check. So I'm going to go ahead and ring the telephone. I'm going to let that go a few times. I'll give it one more ring. Now we want to push our button. The bell will be off in our indicator light. That's our visual alert. So that when HG turns the telephone bell off, he'll have that visual alert that he can see for the ring cycle, which is pretty cool effect. I'll let that go one more time. And I want to give you some dial tone. And as you can see, this is our blue in use light so that when the telephone is being used, it shows uh, this blue light. And I wanted to use a blue light because the telephone is a, like a light powder blue. And so I thought uh, a blue would probably be uh, the best thing to go along with the body of the telephone. We'll go ahead and give you some dial tone. Now what we want to do is we want to go ahead, if you watch the analyzer, we want to dial our numbers. And I want to end in a 2. Now I want to transmit into the handset. So if you watch this red light on the analyzer, that's an indication like before of 100% modulation on transmit. One, two, three, four, five, six, hello, hello. So we know that this telephone has receive, transmit, it's dialing out. We have our in use blue light LED. We have our switch for our bell to turn it off and on. And when the bell's off, our uh, ring cycle visual alert light will show. Now these buttons are stationary now. There was no sense in them being pushed down and we're just using them for a light situation. This button never was uh, any type of a real switch other than what it would do would pop everything back up and uh, when your buttons were down and your hook switch was up and it would uh, release these buttons. So we turned it into an off and on ringer switch as we showed earlier. But now what we can do is I have a button on my switch box here and if I push that in what will happen is I'll get a dial tone a line out and that totally takes the analyzer away from the situation. Now I know earlier in the video when we were doing some checking on this uh, telephone we may have called time and temp and I want to tell you that they're having problems with their equipment. So when we call this time and temp number, you'll hear a recording, and then you'll hear some humming, and then the recording will start again. They're having problems with their equipment. It has nothing to do what we're doing on our end. It's their equipment. So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll call that time and temp number now. I want to give you some dial tone. July 26. The time is 5.09. Current temperature 81 degrees.
for the shower. Otherwise, clearing overnight, lows around 60, mostly sunny on Saturday, a high in the mid-70s. Okay. We can call one other number. We can call my number, and it'll be busy. We'll give you some dial tone. Okay, now that we know that this telephone has been redesigned and repaired, we can return it to HG and he can enjoy this telephone now. And it's just a really cool telephone. I'm sure that anybody that sees HG with this telephone is going to want to try to use it. This is Dennis with A1 Telephone Service and Repair, A1 Electronics. You can reach us on the web at www.a1-telephone.com. And you can also reach us at 618-235-6959. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.